There are some things that we can change on our own. Chris can use his hands to build and bring change. He brings beautiful change. Danielle can use her hands to make things beautiful too. That's how God made us, to create, to build, and to change. But there are some things we can't change no matter how hard we try. For example, if something is dead, we can't make it alive. Ephesians 2, 1 to 3. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. We are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love others as we love ourselves. I was dead in this area. Now, not only when I was younger, but even when I was a believer for a while, when I would meet people, one of the first things going through my mind would be, what can they do for me? What can this relationship do for me? How can it bless me? How can it benefit me? Do they have something they can give me or offer to me? And I think I began to realize this issue in me when I witnessed people doing this to me and it didn't feel so good once I started realizing it and then I thought, oh my goodness, I do this to others. There's a sin that I have struggled with in my life that has caused a spiritual deadness in me. It's the sin of self-focus and self-centeredness that keeps my eyes on myself and and blocks me off from the life source, Jesus Christ. This sin is all wrapped up in comparing myself, constantly keeping my eyes on myself. How, am I, how do I compare to that person? Or how do I compare to that person? I remember feeling it really early in life. I would see um, a girl in my class and she had so many nice clothes and I just had this jealousy rising up within me. How did she have so many nice clothes? that she could wear a different outfit every day of the week, every day of the month. But in my mind, I would imagine myself going into her closet and cutting up her clothes. There was this jealousy inside of me that was causing this deadness, cutting me off from the life source, keeping my focus on myself. And another bad consequence that that had is that I realized I, I would become really afraid whenever I thought I would need to speak in front, front of anyone, even a small group, because I was so afraid that somebody would look at me and compare and say, oh, you don't measure up. And so this fear became so great that I couldn't, you know, speak. If it was speech class, I couldn't, I couldn't do it. My heart would pound, my voice would shake. It was so stressful. And I wouldn't want to ask anybody to pray for me or, or ask for help. I wouldn't want to draw attention to my, to my inadequacies. And I thought maybe they'd try to get me over it and that would be so horrifying and embarrassing if they tried to stick me up there and say, just get over your fear. All this focus on myself was really pride. You know, sometimes I would feel good about myself. Often I'd feel bad about myself but it was all wrapped up in me, 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 me. And so I was dead in my pride and my self-focus and my fear. And these were the things I could not change. But thank God that where we can't, God can. He has life in his hands and in his great love, he brings us from death to life. He changes what is impossible for us to change. Ephesians 2, 4 to 9. But because of his great love for us, God, who was rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the incomparable riches of his grace, expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. 
and I think it the change began to come when I began to pray and ask God for more love. That was just my prayer, more love. Lord, give me more of your love. Give me more love. Give me more love for you. Give me more love for people. Because no matter how much I tried, I couldn't truly love others the way that Christ loves me and the way that Christ loves the church. I was putting my own interests first. I was sometimes disinterested in people. And so the Lord did a work in me and began to give me more and more love to the point where I feel a check in my spirit inside if I'm starting to lose love or not look at someone through the eyes of Christ's love. And as the Lord started to give me more of his love and as I began to see others through his eyes of love, I was able to help others, to love on others without expecting or asking for anything in return. And as part of this impartation of Christ's love came an understanding of the intrinsic worth that I have in him. And if I'm worth a lot, then others are worth a lot. If the Lord looks at me with great love and looks at me as an inheritance and wants to commune and fellowship with me, he wants to commune and fellowship with others. He looks upon every other person that he's created in the same way. And that started to sink in and I was able to begin to look at others with the eyes of Christ. Thinking. When I was 11 years old, I made the decision that I wanted to trust Jesus to save me from my sins. And I was really sincere about that. But I know that I didn't even realize what my sins really were. I didn't realize the damage and the destruction that this self-focus and this pride had done to me inside. Even though I didn't realize it, God was faithful and he knew it and he was working with me and he was changing me, he was showering his love on me. I was, I was 32 years old um, and I was at a Christian conference that God did a landmark change in my life that set me up for more changes. He did a change that I never thought could happen. He took away my fear of speaking in front of people. Let me tell you how it happened. I was at this Christian conference and I was listening to a woman speak about the intimidation that she had dealt with in her life. And she found a verse in Zechariah 10.3 that talked about horses. And the verse said, the Lord Almighty will care for his flock and make them like a proud horse in battle. And she said that even though horses are usually skittish animals that'll run away from loud noises or danger, she said a war horse has been trained so that if its master tells him to run into battle, that horse will run into battle. It will run into battle and not run away. And she said, I want to be so in love with my Lord, with my master, that if he tells me to go, I will go. And I thought, I, I do love the Lord. There's many ways that if he would tell me to do something, in fact, if he would tell me to speak in front of people, instead of going, I would say, no, no way, no way. And so I realized that in many ways, I was like an untrained horse governed by fear, that I was dead in my fear, dead from the joy of adventure with my Lord. And so I, I, I had a landmark prayer that day. I had a landmark prayer. I asked God for something that only he could do. It was nothing that I could do. I said, Lord, I pray that you would help me to be able to speak in public without fear and that you would give me a message to share. Well, shortly after that, my mother called me and she said, would you be able to speak to this women's group about the time that you spent traveling and about the lessons that God's taught you? I knew that for me to trust God, that he was gonna change me in a way that was impossible, I was gonna have to say yes to him. 
so I said yes with the tears streaming down my face. Even as I drove to the women's meeting, I felt all the same feelings of fear, but God had given me a message to share. He had done that part. He had given me a message to share. And as I stood up behind the podium, he did the second part. He took away my fear that I had always felt when I stood in front of a group and when I shared in front of a group. He changed me. He changed me and he's been changing me. He brought me from, from death to life in that area and that gave me faith. Oh, if he did it in that area, he can do it in this other area where I'm struggling with jealousy. He can do it in that area because it's not about me, it's about him. In his mercy, he allowed my eyes to start focusing on him. I belong to you. I'm forever connected to you. It's all about you. You're the life source. You are slow to anger. You are abounding in steadfast covenant love towards me. And I say like Moses said, you're the best thing I have going for me. And I want to dwell in your presence. I don't want to go anywhere without your presence. Your life-giving presence. We can't boast that we changed ourselves. We can't. It has been grace that has saved us through our faith. It is his grace that keeps changing us. Do you know the story of John Welsh? He was born in Scotland in 1568 to a wealthy family. From a young age, no one could tell him what to do. He refused any correction. The rebellion started early. He wouldn't stay in school, and he joined a gang of thieves who would rob travelers and humiliate them horribly. He was dead in his transgressions. His father even said of him, the first news I expect to hear from my son is that he was hanged as a thief. But the Spirit of God, who is rich in mercy, began to breathe change over him. And the dead, John Welsh, began to respond. Nobody knows quite how it happened, but faith in God started to rise up in him, and he repented for all his sinful ways. He returned to his father's house and went to school to become a minister. He became known as a diligent student. Only God could bring that change to him. He was known for his extraordinary character and his zeal for the Lord. He would preach to others, and when they didn't like it or were jealous of him, he would respond by praying. He prayed about eight hours a day. He moved to a town called Ayer, that was well known for its violence and decay. When he was dead in his transgressions, John would have joined right in with them in their violence, but God had changed him. And when he would hear that a fight was breaking out, he would put on a steel helmet, go into the middle of the fight, and urge those fighting to sit down together to eat in the middle of the street. He would pray, and he would mediate between them until there was peace. And it made a difference. Soon Ayer started to be transformed from death to life and a great revival happened there. God even protected the whole town from a plague that was sweeping through the region. John was a man transformed by God and he welcomed others into that death to life transformation in a way that changed his nation. Ephesians 2.10, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are his masterpieces, formed with his life-giving hands, changed by his life-giving hands into a masterpiece that looks like him, brought from death to life with a purpose to do good works that were prepared in advance for us to do. Think about how you have been made alive by God. By God. How, he, how has he changed and transformed you to look more like Jesus? Changed and transformed you in ways you could never have transformed yourself. What hasn't changed yet? Offer yourself to him. Let him bring the transformation. It's a process from glory to glory. When a sculpture is being formed out of stone, there are several steps that it goes through. First, the big pieces are chipped away with a hammer and chisel. Then the more refined sculpting happens, where a different chisel is used, and it's a slow and careful process as a beautiful form is being shaped. Then once the outline is made, 
The sculptor sands away the rough edges and then polishes it until it shines. Let Jesus keep unwrapping the grave clothes and bring you from death to life as only he can do. Let him make you into his beautiful masterpiece.